Are you a new leader and you would like to know how you can feel more confident? Or maybe you already are a leader with a bit of experience, but you would like to understand how to reach your full potential? The secret to reach your full potential is understanding your strength. I'm a certified strength coach. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you my top tips on how to understand your strength and turn these into your leadership superpowers. My name is Anne Koopman and I'm a former engineer and senior leader in the manufacturing industry. And now I work as a leadership coach for emerging leaders and I'm an expert for team development. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because I regularly update new videos around leadership tips, self-development and effective teams. Today, I'm going to talk about what is strength development? Why does strength development matter? And what are the five tips to become a strength-based leader. So strength-based development is based on the idea that we all have these natural talents, our innate ways of thinking, behaving, interacting with other people. It's the way we process data, solve problems, and naturally interact and communicate. And the idea is that if we understand what we naturally do best, and we practice these talents and turn them into our strength, then we will be less stressed and feel more confident about the way that we work and interact in life. There's a bit of a difference when we talk about talents versus skills and versus knowledge. So skills is something about how do you do a certain task. This could be certain steps of how to drive a truck or how to program a new software. And these are things that we could all learn. Skills is something that we can all learn and practice. Based on our talents that are natural to us, we will have a bit of a natural tendency of how successful we are going to be with certain skills. But in general, skills are certain things that we can all learn. Then there's knowledge, which is everything that we can study and learn and gain more awareness about. This is nothing that we are born with. This is also something that we can learn and take on board. Then we have our talents, which is something that's in there with us, the way we think, act and behave. And that's what we are going to focus on to understand your way of approaching the world and being in this world and how this can help you to become the best leader you can be. Gallup has, in their research, they have found that people who use their strength every day are three times more likely to report a high quality of life. And they're also eight times more productive. So overall, understanding and using our strength can help us to feel more confident, to like ourselves better, but also understand how we can be more effective in the way we show up at work and in our personal life. So why is strengths-based development important for leaders? As managers, you know, you have to fulfill a lot of different requirements. There is constantly somebody tugging and pulling at you, pushing you in every direction, and it can feel quite overwhelming. And if we're new to the management role, like a lot of the emerging leaders that I work with, it can sometimes be really hard to understand how you can be the best leader you can be. I personally totally fell into the comparison trap when I started to be a leader and when I became a manager for the first time and was leading a whole department, I compared myself to the leaders left and right of myself and it made me doubt myself. It made me feel really insecure because I was just not like them and certain things that were easy for them felt really difficult and tricky for me. It made me doubt myself. It made me think that I'm not made for this job. It made me question why I'm even in this position and I did not feel great about myself. And for me, then understanding my strength really helped me to understand that there are things that I do well and better than anyone else, that I have unique talents and strengths that can help me to be the best leader I can be, but in my own unique way, the way I communicate, the way I build relationships, the way I think clearly and strategically, and the way I lead the way and influence people around me. I do this differently. You will do it differently. And I understood from this moment that I don't have to compare myself. And you know, if we research, we all find so many different definitions for leadership styles. You can be autocratic, you can be transformational, you can be laissez-faire, you can be a coaching leader. And there's so many different styles and people come to me and they're like, I don't know what my style is. I don't know how to find my style. Well, the thing is, everyone has a style, but it's unique to you. Don't try to fit into any of these boxes that are out there because the way you will lead is going to be so individual to you and specific. And that's your only way 
way to really be successful because if you step into who you really are and understand that, you will be so successful. You will smash your goals and you will build amazing relationships with the people that you lead. And most importantly, they will trust you because they start to see the real you and they start to understand that if you are showing up with your strength, it's also okay for them to show up with their strength. So let's talk about the different steps that you can take now to develop your own strength-based leadership approach. So step number one is obviously to get to know and understand your strength. Now, there's lots of different strength assessments out there that you can use. I personally work with the Gallup Clifton Strength Assessment, and I really like it and work with it with my clients. But there's lots of different assessments out there that you can use. And then you can also reflect on your strength. You don't have to do an assessment. You can also take some time to reflect and talk to other people and kind of reflect on your strength and go from there. So spend some time understanding your results understanding your strength, understanding what that strength means for you and how it shows up for you every day. How are you using your strength in your work and your private and personal life? So it's the first step is to understand what your strengths are and how they show up for you in your work. Step number two is to become aware of our blind spots and weaknesses. So whilst we, of course, want to focus more on our strength and not so much on our weaknesses, it's still important to become aware of the things that we don't naturally do so well. Now, I don't want you to spend too much time on your weaknesses because fixing your weaknesses is never going to get you to fulfill your full potential. You might get a little bit better at it, but it will never give you the energy and motivate you and allow you to build the skills you need to be a good, successful leader. But we want to make sure that your weaknesses are not holding you back. So we want to become aware of the things that we don't do well. Then we want to understand their impact. Like, are they impacting the work that we do? Are they impacting our energy levels? Am I in an environment right now where I'm required to use these lesser strengths of mine? And then think about strategies to overcome them. Are there any strength that you can use to overcome the weaknesses? Or are you able to team up with someone else that has these strengths and can help you in these situations? And sometimes we just have to do it. We have to do the things that we don't do well, but we can allow ourselves a little bit more time if it's something that um, takes a lot of time for us. We can show ourselves much more compassion if it feels like things are taking forever or we can't just get it right. And we can also just do it and be okay with not being at our best because we know there's things that we don't do well but we know there are strengths that are amazing as well. So for an example, if you personally don't thrive on having very regular days, having a very set structure and having um, tasks that are repetitive, if this is something that's not your strength and it's going to drain you a little bit more and you work in an environment though where you are required to do lots of repetitive work and every day looks exactly the same, then it might actually drain your energy a lot and your output is not going to be as great and so something that you can do to help yourself is just rearranging your day a little bit in how much you can impact that of course but you could split up your day into certain tasks you can change where you do your work work from home a little bit go to this desk go into that office or somewhere else kind of break up the environment a bit allow yourself lots of breaks in between so you can you know shake it out, do something else and do something fun for your brain um, to kind of switch up this monotone tasks a little bit more. And then another part here is to understand your blind spots. So let's explore what blind spots means. So with every strength, because we naturally do it best, there's also a bit of a shadow side. So if we are overusing our strength, if we do too much of it, if we don't use them intentionally, they can sometimes also get in our way. These are also the things that make us feel misunderstood or maybe are misconceived by other people. So for an example, if you are a very detail-driven person and you love to understand all the facts around it and all the data that went into it you might tend to ask a lot of questions and you might be the one that puts up your hand again and again in a meeting for other people this might be understood as you being very critical you're not trusting them you're trying to check and micromanage so they might actually misunderstand your strength and so then your eye for detail might be actually getting into your way because it might get into the way of your working relationships so what you can do here is once you are aware of your blind spots you can also 
spot these in action. So if you know that you tend to ask a lot of questions and might come across as critical, you can kind of, you know, slow yourself down a little bit. Or you can also explain to the others, hey, I'm just asking a few questions, not because I'm doubting your work, but because I want to make sure that I understand it correctly. I want to make sure that we don't miss or make a mistake. I'm not asking questions to figure out where you did something wrong. I just need this to be at my best. I need to know all the little details. So again, Again, it goes back to communicating about your blind spots, but also managing them so that they don't get in your way. Step number three is to apply your strength to your leadership. Gallup has defined seven key responsibilities for leaders. And these responsibilities are a really good way to get started when we think about how can we apply our strength to our leadership role and what does that actually mean? So these seven responsibilities are building relationships, communicating effectively, inspiring others, leading change, developing people, thinking critically and creating accountability. So for you, it's important to take some time and reflect on how your top strength can help you to fulfill these different responsibilities. How can you use your strengths to communicate clearly? How can you use your strengths to hold people accountable? How can you use your strength to help people through change? Let me share some examples with you so you understand what I mean and to make it a little bit easier because I know this can be a bit abstract at the start. Let's say your strengths are related to relationship building. You're really good at building trust. You're really good at empathy or holding and creating a safe space. You're really good at investing in relationships and understanding what the individual needs. How can you use these strengths of being kind of the connector? How can you use that for your leadership or for communicating more effectively as one of the examples of the seven responsibilities. First of all, you can use this to create a psychological safe environment. Effective communication needs trust and it needs a safe environment so that everybody feels safe to show up and speak up and share what's on their mind without being scared of being judged or being pushed into a corner. So you can make sure that everybody feels welcome and every opinion is welcomed. And then use your connection skills to really tune into your listening and empathy skills because effective communication is of course about what's coming out of your mouth, but it's also about you listening and understanding what the other person's trying to say. So you with the connection strength, you have a big opportunity here to be the listener and make everyone feel heard. Let's share another example. So if your strength is more on the strategic end, like you're really good at understanding the next steps, understanding different priorities or different routes to take. And if you're really good at understanding consequences, thinking up new ideas, um, analyzing data, then you can use this, for example, to inspire others by painting the picture of what's possible. Using your strategic strength of being able to see the different solutions and pathways and sharing that with the others, showing the data that points to the right decision. So kind of helping them understand what's possible. So you can inspire them by using your data-driven mind or your strategic thinking mind to help them feel excited as well. Or a third example, if you are a very consistent person and you thrive on discipline and you thrive on having certain frameworks and procedures, then when you want to lead change, for example, as another of the seven responsibilities, then you can use these strengths to be the constant, to be the rock. When we go through change, what your people need is something that is constant, that they can rely on, something that is steady. And with you being the one that is able to create procedures easily and stick to processes and procedures and make sure that everybody is treated fairly, you can become that rock throughout change. So these were three examples of how you can apply your strength to one of the seven responsibilities. So give it a go. Start to reflect. You don't have to match every strength with every responsibility, but you can start to think a little bit about how can you use and apply your strength a little bit more effectively to fulfill these leadership responsibilities. And important here to know is also that your strength are the right leadership strength. I often get the question of what's the best strength to be a good leader? The answer is your strength are the best strength. Whatever is your strength is your way of leading best. And now we come to the fourth step. The step number four is all about building a strength-based team. 
So to build a strength-based culture in your team, you of course start by understanding and applying your strength, which we have done in step number one, two, and three. And now it's about focusing your attention on your team members. Take some time to figure out their strength. Maybe they can do an assessment too, or you can sit with them and get them to do a reflection exercise on their strength. Once you understood their strengths, try and understand what that means for the role and the task that they are doing. How can you help them applying their strength a little bit more in their work? What is it that they need from you to be at their best? Also, what are their blind spots and weaknesses and how you can help them overcome these? This is key to really understand how your team members work best and supporting them in their development. And then lastly, to build this strength-based culture in your team, start to understand how can your team collaborate more effectively by using their strength. Making sure that everyone understands the strength and also blind spots of every other individual. And that way you can start to see where are they similar, where are they different, and what does that mean for the tasks and the goals that you have as a team. Get together as a team and define strategies of how you can use and apply your strength to achieve the goals for the next 3, 6 or 12 months. So as a quick recap, how can you develop your strength-based leadership? Step number one is getting to know your strength and how they show up for you. Step number two was about understanding and managing your blind spots and weaknesses. Step number three is investing time to understand how you can apply your strength to the seven leadership responsibilities. And step number four was about building a strength-based culture in your team. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or if you already have experience with working with your strength. I can't wait to hear from you.